going to start off with the Rottnest Channel swim. Yeah. Um, so are you looking forward to the day and um, will you be starting the race as always? Uh, yes, I will be starting the race. I've done that uh, probably for the last 12, 15 years. Uh, it's a great event and uh, to see you know, up to 2,000 competitors uh, and swimming to Rottnest, mm -hmm. uh, leaving Cottesloe Beach in the early hours of the morning is visually terrific to look at and a great sense of excitement. Uh, and West Australians have got this great love of mass participation events yeah. uh, and this probably stands out amongst those. So yeah, great tr Cottesloe tradition. Yeah, definitely one of your favourite events of the year. Uh, it's probably my favourite local event. Uh, yeah. I think that and probably sculpture by the sea. Yeah, both at Cottesloe. Yeah, yeah. both at Cottesloe. <laughs> and do you have any family or friends or staff who are um, swimming tomorrow? No, I haven't got anyone on my staff uh, or family, but uh, obviously I know a lot of the people. And there's a few of my generation that I went to yeah. school with who swim every year, so they always give me a bit of a hard time <laughs> For not taking part. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, could probably, I could probably make it around the pylon and that. Yeah, I, th I think I'm probably with you there. <laughs> and um, your board shorts that you usually wear have attracted a bit of attention over the years. Will you be wearing a different pair? They're magnificent, year? aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I only wear them once a year, and that's for yeah. the Cottesloe Swim. And when I, um, or the Rottnest Channel Swim, and when I um, stop as a, as a Premier and Member of Parliament, I intend yeah. to have them framed and give them to the organisation that runs the Oh, swim. that's a good I'm, idea. I'm sure they'll find that touching. Yeah, so you're not, <laughs> you're not going to change them up this year, you're going to wear the same No, ones. no, they, um, yeah. Lynn had to sew them together a couple oh. of years ago. They're, they're not in very good shape, but they, they, once yeah. a year they're okay. They do the job, yeah. Um, and I'll just move on to Sunday trading. So with regards to this, how do you think um, the local businesses in Cottesloe and Claremont will take it on board? Well, I think in, in Claremont in particular, it'll be extremely popular yeah. and I think very good for, for businesses. Uh, Claremont's a, a major centre and then obviously with the new um, development of Claremont, it's uh, very high fashion, uh, appeals particularly to young people. So um, it's already packed on a Saturday and I think Sunday will be huge in Claremont. Uh, for, the, for the more suburban ones like Cottesloe, Mosman Park, maybe not so much, so much difference and, and maybe many of those businesses may choose not to open on Sunday. That's up to them. Yeah. Yeah, and um, do you see it as being a quite a successful thing in this area? Uh, yes, there, there is no doubt that people enjoy going out on a weekend shopping. Um, they're not pressured by time. They can look around, particularly with clothing or household durable goods that are expensive. Uh, and uh, lots of cafes, lots of restaurants, so good fun. And, and I guess people that have obviously full-time jobs, it gives them an opportunity for extra shopping and to enjoy the weekend a bit more without having to rush around on Saturday and... Yeah, Everything. and with uh, increasing internet sales, shops of retailers have to offer more, and it's part yeah. of the enjoyment of shopping. I've got to say, I don't like shopping much, <laughs> <laughs> but most people out there do. Yeah. Uh, and so that becomes an activity to go with friends or you know, together, couples, um, shop, have a sandwich, have a beer, whatever it might be. So it, it will be very, very popular, particularly amongst young people. Yeah. Um, and do you think, like, especially having the Claremont Court open on Sundays will have any effect on other local small businesses? Or do you think, because it's optional, it will just sort of run together? Yeah, I think the other small businesses, particularly around Claremont, will benefit. Claremont Court will be one of the major focuses in Perth for Sunday shopping. Mm -hmm. about uh, and look, I, I think people will also support other centres. People will get into a habit, more of a European habit, of going out and doing their shopping yeah. you know, during the daytime and on weekends. Yeah. And um, just on to Parliament, obviously it's just recently started again for the year. How's the first week been? Uh, well, pretty important week. Um, obviously, uh, I present what's called the Premier Statement, which outlines the legislative program for the year and what the government is trying to achieve. Uh, it was Mark McGowan's first week as Labor leader, so that's a, that's a big deal for him. And uh, you know, quite a lot happened, uh, particularly tabling the report of the bushfires at Margaret River. Yeah. And, and it ended with this chaos in Canberra about you know, Julia or Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And um, is there anything on the agenda in the first six months that particularly affects the local councils around here? Uh, no, well, retail shopping itself, that'll be one of the yeah. first bills dealt with. Um, there are other pieces of legislation that are important. Uh, one, which no doubt will attract a fair bit of attention, attention with the regulation of prostitution mm -hmm. uh, and that's an issue right across the metropolitan area. Um, there are far more brothels and uh, activity like that than perhaps most people realise and we want to control that to protect young women and also to restrict it to entertainment or club districts, not have um, you know, small suburban brothels, if you like, uh, opening up uh, across the towns and suburbs of the state. So that, that's a big item. There will also be uh, legislation to control the activities of lobbyists and, and there'll be, a, I think one bill that will attract attention will be um, uh, legislation relating to mental health. 
okay. to, to give people who have mental illness uh, greater rights, um, uh, greater protections, and I think that will um, also help destigmatise uh, mental health. So that's important. I think a lot of people will be interested in that, particularly yeah. around this area. Yeah, especially because of Greyland yeah. Hospital. Yeah. Mm. Um, and did you make the, mo um, the most of your last few weeks of holidays before Parliament went back? Did you do anything special or go down to the beach more? Uh, look, we, I had a really nice holiday and Lynn and I just, uh, we walked the dogs a couple of times a day, we went to the beach, we swam, we caught up with old friends and uh, good friends. Uh, didn't do anything dramatic, but yeah. that's the sort of holiday I want. The last thing I want to do on a holiday is get on an aeroplane and go somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. run around and be stressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and to finish off, um, what are your thoughts on the Kevin Rudd and Julia situation and who do you think would be better for WA? Well, I think at the first point, uh, it is embarrassing for Australia. Uh, this is a humiliating experience. Um, I think, uh, well, as a Liberal leader, I'm not going to buy into it, but I do, the only observation I'd make is I believe Kevin Rudd did have a greater understanding of Western Australia yeah. than I would say Julia Gillard has. Mm -hmm. Certainly as a Premier, I found it easy to deal yeah. with Kevin Rudd than I did with Julia Gillard. Yeah, mm. okay. All right, well, I think that's probably about it. Okay, thanks a lot, Thank Ashley. you. Thanks very much. Okay.